Hey everyone, Kevin from Tech Select here, and today I wanted to discuss our newest sound card, the ReSound New Wave MCA. This card is meant for use in IBM microchannel bus computers and was derived from the Snark Barker MCA by TubeTime. The Snark Barker itself is a clone of the Sound Blaster MCV model CT5320. Microchannel sound cards are rare, so it's unlikely the specs are widely known, and the name itself is a little ambiguous. If you were to compare it to the ISA line of Sound Blasters, it would be equivalent in functionality to the Sound Blaster 2. These cards originally had OPL2 for FM sound, digital playback up to 44.1 kHz mono, digital recording up to 15 kHz mono, PC joystick support, Sound Blaster MIDI, and two sockets for the Creative Music System, i.e. SAA 1099s, used on the original Game Blaster sound card. While the new wave is based on the Snark Barker, we did make several changes. The most obvious change was to convert to surface mount parts instead of through hole like the original. We moved most of the logic to faster ACT ICs instead of the LS or Snark Barker's HCT logic. The DAC and the IC originally used for the joystick are no longer in production, but we were able to adapt them to off the shelf parts. This means that the OPL3 and its companion DAC are the only two out of production parts on the card. Speaking of which, we move from the OPL2 to the OPL3. The OPL3 is backward compatible with the OPL2, so this will allow the card to function as normal. We decided to remove the two SAA 1099 sockets, as they were not functional due to issues which have yet to be resolved in the CPLD, and ultimately, very few Game Blaster games work very well on hardware later than a 286. Likewise, we decided to remove the microphone input. It was limited to 15 kHz mono, so we thought it would be of pretty limited use. The line level output circuitry uses the same high quality audio path we use on all of our resound cards, so if you're an audio nut like I am, it should sound a little better than the original. The final change was made to the roll off filter used by the DAC. The original Sound Blaster MCV used a low pass filter of around 3800 Hz. At the time, this probably made sense as most games would have been sampled at 8 to 22 kHz, resulting in a 4 to 11 kHz audio playback. However, the card will support up to 44.1 kHz sample rates, or full range audio. Changing to a higher frequency on the filter seems like an obvious solution. Sound Blaster took a safe approach by filtering just below the minimum playback rate. However, I decided to do a little experimenting and change this to higher frequencies to just see how it sounded. There could have been some artifacts or two at lower bit rates, but as I increased the roll off, it was much milder than expected. I moved the filter up to 17 kHz, and it sounds, well, I think the results speak for themselves. I really like microchannel computers. They hold a certain nostalgia for me. In fact, my first IT job was back when IT was still called IS, or Information Services. I worked the help desk at a big company supporting Windows for Workgroups 3.11 on IBM Model 70 and Model 80 machines. These machines were already about three to four years old by the time I started working there, and I upgraded many a poor soul to Windows 95, but that's another story. While I do have a soft spot for PS2s personally, it would be an outright lie to say that they are problem-free. IBM led the industry with the release of the original IBM PC. While even the mainframe market had its clone, I think IBM wildly underestimated PC sales, and the wide-open specs for the system were far too tempting and simple for clones not to come. IBM was not keen to make that mistake again, and really locked down the PS2 system, specifically the microchannel bus itself. 
I don't know all the specifics, but there were a few companies who licensed the microchannel bus, such as Grid. There may have been more, but IBM largely built an island that few dared to travel. As a result, expansion cards were few and far between. They were also very expensive, as many of them would only come from IBM directly. Cost was not the only hurdle, however. The MCA bus was more advanced than ISA in many ways, but it could be difficult to understand and to get peripherals working properly. Even if you were able to get one working, there's no guarantee that it would work properly in all systems. I am speculating a little, but I think the rules may have been bent a little over time to accommodate newer CPUs, and devices could actually bend the rules of the bus at times to make itself faster. Whatever the reasons, there are many scenarios under which the original Sound Blaster MCV, as well as the ReSound New Wave MCA, may not function correctly. In some cases, your system may work fine with DOS apps, but may not work well at all with Windows 3.1. You may also have to spend some time trying various configurations to get your application working, and it can be a little frustrating. I own a few different PS2s, and I have tested this card in all of them. Most of the machines that I own have also been tested with the Snark Barker, and they have the exact same results. This is expected, but it does make it easy to track down known issues because the Snark Barker already has a head start on tested systems. My Model 70 seems to work the best, and once you follow the guidance available for setting up that system properly, you can get it to work in most scenarios. For the rest of this video, I'll be showing the Model 70 in action. The first step will be to take the machine apart and install the card. Any available slot will work just fine. Once the card is installed, tighten the screw on the expansion slot and slide the case back on. There are only two jacks on the back of the ReSound New Wave. One is for the audio out and the other is for the joystick and Sound Blaster MIDI. Any analog type joystick will plug directly into the back of the card. If you want to use the Sound Blaster MIDI port, you can actually use the old Creative Labs MIDI cable if you happen to have one sitting around. It has MIDI in and out, as well as a cable for your joystick. If you don't happen to have an old creative cable lying around, we will be selling one soon. It has MIDI in and out, as well as two joystick ports, so you won't need the joystick Y cable for two players. It will work on our card, as well as any Sound Blaster or compatible. Just doing one more check to make sure everything's plugged in and ready to go. I plug my analog joypad in and my MIDI out cable is connected to my Roland JV1080. So now it's time to get your reference disc and make sure you've already copied the ADF file over for the ReSound New Wave. On boot, you should see a 165 error code indicating that a new adapter was installed in the machine. At this point, just install the reference disk and tell it to run automatically. If you have an expansion memory card installed in your system like I do, you will need to reboot one more time to run the reference disk a second time. Normally though, you only have to run it the first time. But since we're here, it won't hurt to take a look at the settings that were applied to the card. On this system, the joystick shows to be disabled. This means the system believes there's an I.O. port conflict with the device. If you try to force it, the whole card will be disabled too. After a bit of reading, I was unable to locate a conflict for this system on that I.O., so I thought I would just try to trick the system by modifying the ADF file. All you need to do is delete the I.O. range next to the device in the file, and you can force the joystick to enable. Be aware, this may cause conflicts if you try it on your system.
there it is, enabled, and the card's still enabled as well. So now it's time to remove the reference disk and play around with the system a little bit. I already have some stuff installed, so I'm just going to tour you through a few items. Hey look, the joystick's working after all. Canyon on the OPL2. Canyon on the JV-1080. I'm thirsty. I don't think you should drink that. It looks bad for you. Nonsense. It makes me feel great. 
Smarter, more aggressive. I feel like I could. Like I could. Like I could. Okay, it's time to give Doom a try, and it's notoriously kind of a problem with these systems, but uh, we'll give it a shot. Okay, it crashed, but that sort of happens on this system, but if you use DOS 32A, supposedly you can get it to work. Let's give that a try. I went ahead and aborted it because the FM sound was working, but the digital playback wasn't for some reason. But right as I launched it, I happened to notice that DOS 32A launched it with the wrong IRQ. So I put the reference disc back in and thought I would just go ahead and change the card to IRQ2 and see what happens. The instructions say to run Doom first before you run the patched version, so I'm not sure if you need to do that every time, but I just went ahead and did it again anyway. Okay, I had to do it. Here's here's the real ending. <laughs>